Let's, uh, let's get into the word. Turn with me, if you will, uh, to the book of 2 Peter. It's in the New Testament towards the back. Um, starting with chapter 3, verse 8, and going to read verse 8 through 15. Again, that is the book of 2 Peter. All the way in the back. Matter of fact, it's closer to the back than it is the front. Second Peter chapter 3, verses 8 through 15. And we'd ask out of reverence for the reading of God's word, those who are physically able, if they could please stand uh, when you have it. Second Peter chapter 3, verses 8 through 15. There are many translations of uh, God's word. I'm going to be reading the New International Version for you today. Hear ye the word of the Lord. But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, the day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire and earth and everything done in it will be laid bare. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you be? You ought to live holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God and speed its coming. That day will bring about destruction of the heavens by fire and the elements will melt in the heat. But keeping with his promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth where righteousness dwells. So dear friends, you are looking forward to this make every effort to be found spotless and blameless and at peace with him. Bear in mind that our Lord's patience means salvation, just as our dear brother Paul also wrote you with the wisdom that God gave him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Pray with me, please. O Lord, our God, how excellent is your name in all the earth. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, your name is great and greatly to be praised. Here I am, but your humble servant standing behind your sacred desk once again. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Allow this to be a message for your people. Hide me behind your cross so that people don't see me, but they see Jesus. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Yeah, I bet y'all wasn't expecting that kind of passage during uh, Christmas time. Uh, For the time that is ours to share together, I would like to talk a little bit about how do we pass the time? How do we pass the time? Um, a few days ago, my wife was cooking dinner and, uh, my oldest son ran into the kitchen wanting to know when dinner was going to be ready. You seen my boy, he's 12 years old, five, five, 200 pounds. He does not miss a meal. Matter of fact, at one of the older schools he used to go to, he would be eating in the car on the way. We'd make a little waffle or something for him, and and he'd be eating that, and then he'd hop out the car after he finished. "Mm, mm, mm." What's for breakfast? And he would say that to the students, I mean to the teachers as he was getting out the car 
I'm hungry. What's for breakfast? And he said it so much that when we had our ARD meeting with them, they wanted to talk to us to make sure that we were feeding him. And I said, does it look like the boy misses a meal? He's trying to get double breakfast. And so we're at home, and he keeps running back and forth into the kitchen. Uh, the chicken's done. The vegetables is done. Uh, we're just waiting on the rice. And he runs in and out of the kitchen like four or five times. Is the rice done? No! Come back again. Is the rice done? Oh, no! He was hungry, and he would get frustrated every time somebody told him, not yet. He's not the most patient of people. I have no idea where he got that from. I, I, I don't know. The rice was not taking that long to cook. It, it, it's rice. But the more he kept running back and forth and the more frustrated he got, he got so frustrated that he went into the bedroom, his bedroom, and laid down and put the covers on his head. Now, I don't fault my son for having trouble waiting. Truth be told, we all have trouble waiting from time to time. Uh, everything has gotten faster and faster and faster. We've gotten faster cars. We've gotten faster internet. We've gotten faster for everything that goes on. Matter of fact, if you ever want to hear me yell, catch me calling uh, tech support or customer service, and they try to give me a robot to try to walk me through my problem, I will yell, customer service representative, quickly. I don't want to go through the menu. I've gone online. I've looked up whatever problem I have, and I need to talk to a person to fix it. But we all don't like to wait. And there's a, 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 a niche, a, 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 a niche that has capitalized on having us pass the time while we wait, right? We have multiple entertainment options to keep us occupied. Um, but despite having technology and, and uh, practically a supercomputer in our hands, in our phones, uh, waiting is still hard. We wait at airports, right? 9-11 changed the way we fly. Uh, I, I have... TSA pre, because I, I travel quite a bit, and I almost wonder, should I have TSA pre these days? Because the TSA pre line seems to be as long as the regular line for security, and now they've got clear, and they've got all of these other things. We wait in traffic. We wait at the post office. I imagine if more of us voted, we'd spend some time waiting at the polls, Six point three million people in the greater Houston area and two hundred thousand. That ain't part of the sermon. I'm 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 gonna get off that. That's for another Sunday. But 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 we wait, and our patience runs thin. But there are people that have capitalized off of how we pass the time. Um, April twenty seventh. 2023 has something in common. Um, there are two well-known men that are not connected with one another, but they both passed away on that date. Uh, the more famous one is somebody by the name of Jerry Springer. He died at age 79, and he is remembered largely for his namesake tabloid talk show, which has almost 5,000 episodes between 1991 and 2018. The Jerry Springer Show is considered uh, a pioneering program in reality TV and the first of what some people call trash TV. Jerry, Jerry, Jerry. 
Uh, the other man who died that same day uh, was the name of Rabbi Harold Kushner. He was 88, and he was known for his helpful books, which he sought to answer life's most troubling questions about loss and uh, the goodness of God. In doing so, he brought comfort and courage to people across the world. Springer's show included provocative topics such as um, guests talking about relationships and, and bringing married men on the show to admit to fairs with their wives, best friends, and, and the wives being in there. And, and then, of course, uh, uh, they were brought on because they knew they weren't going to get that information and say, hmm, I have things to consider about. Thank you for telling me that. No, they knew a fight was coming. Chaos was going to ensue. Physical fights, verbal abuse, and you got to throw a couple chairs. It's not a Jerry Springer episode if somebody didn't throw a chair. And the whole time, the audience in the studio would cheer it on. Jerry, Jerry, Jerry. So much so that the security guard got his own show from the way he came out to deal with the mess. But you know what's interesting? I don't fault Jerry Springer. He went with what people responded to. Um, what you reward is what continues. But interestingly enough, uh, the show debuted on September 30th of 1991, and it started as a politically oriented talk program show, and it addressed serious topics. He had people on there like uh, Army General Oliver North and Jesse Jackson, and he talked about homelessness and guns and politics, but then nobody want to watch that. The, the, the show didn't get that many viewers, so a, a new producer came in and hyped up the show and revamped it to get higher ratings, and it targeted uh, tabloid-type hypersensationalism, and Springer was willing to stay with it. Uh, people that knew Jerry Springer personally say he was a nice guy. In the years before the Jerry Springer show, he worked in politics in Cincinnati and was even the mayor at one point. And the legacy that sticks to him, though, is the TV show. Uh, five months before he passed away, uh, Jerry Springer was interviewed on uh, David Yontif's Behind the Velvet Rope podcast, and he asked himself and he, if he considered himself the granddad of reality TV. And Springer responded, no, I, I just apologize. I'm so sorry. What have I done? I've ruined the culture. Uh, Harold Kushner was a serving rabbi when his book, When Bad Things Happen to Good People, was published in 1981, and he, writ he wrote it after his son Aaron passed away, who had a premature aging disease uh, called progeria. And, and the book details, and it deals with questions about human suffering, about God, and about omnipotence and theodicy. Theodicy is a big old five dollar uh, seminary word that talks about why why do bad things happen if if there's a God, um, and and it explains even the best sometimes suffer from adversity, and it talks about how we could turn our pain into something meaningful instead of lamenting it. Kushner aimed to assist individuals in maintaining their belief in God's benevolence despite experiencing personal tragedies. Now, the book resonated with readers across religions and was translated into 12 languages, and 4 million copies had been sold by the book's 20th anniversary, and Kushner went on to write other books aimed at helping people understand more about God and to deal with the difficulties of life and the pains of being human. Two different men with different aims. And I don't bring them up to say that one was good or one was bad. I don't fault Jerry Springer. I don't fault uh, Kushner. I don't fault either one of them. I don't say who's good or bad. I just point out that they got in their spaces because they made something for people to have while 
they passed the time. And that is what is going on in the book of 2 Peter. Peter is telling the people what they need to do to pass the time. I like 1 and 2 Peter because I like Peter. Uh, as I study uh, both the scriptures and religious history, Peter resonates with me. Uh, Peter was the type of person who told you what was on his mind and did not care how you felt about it. He just told you what was on his mind. Uh, Peter, Peter had a little cussing problem. I'm in the book. I'm, I'm in the book. There were times when people asked Peter something, and the Bible says he cussed in response. Peter was the type of person that would throw hands first and ask questions later. If there was a misunderstanding, Peter was the type of person that you, if you knew where you were going and what kind of function you were going to, you might not bring Peter with you. Or in some cases, you would bring Peter with you. But Peter was the one that when the Roman soldiers came to arrest Peter, Peter had a sword and cut one of the soldiers, cut his ear off, and Jesus had to stop the fighting and put the ear back on and heal him. But Peter had that thing on him. And so the reason I like Peter is because with all of that, and then some, because uh, there were times he did not do what Jesus told him to do, and he had turned away and then came back, but he became the one that Jesus gave the keys to the kingdom to when he ascended. And so if Peter, who might throw hands first before getting an understanding, if Peter, who might cuss a little bit, if Peter, who had a little bit of an attitude, was somebody that God could use to advance the kingdom, I like to see that because that means maybe there's something for me. And so Peter wrote this book. Peter was one of the earliest disciples of Jesus. Uh, I, I will tell you, though, that they think maybe, possibly, Peter didn't write Second Peter. They know he wrote First Peter, but they think he might not have um, might not have written, written rather, Second Peter, uh, because the Greek is a little more too polished. It's it's a little it's a little refined. They think somebody might have helped Peter write this passage because uh, it didn't jibe with the cussing fisherman that throws hands first and and, and asks questions later. But I still believe it's in the same vein. And, and, and Peter is letting these people know what they need to do while they wait for Jesus return. And so there's a delay. Let the church say delay. delay. Uh, when you read first and second Peter, but uh, primarily second Peter, um, you'll learn that there are some false teachers in this time. Um, there are false teachers that are running around saying to stop believing in Jesus. He ain't coming back. You are wasting your time. Abandon the idea of Christ's return. Uh, they are saying that since Jesus is not directly in front of you, it has to be false. And then there are other people that are saying that either Jesus hasn't come back yet because we're not good enough for him, or the whole thing is a lie. And these are the church folks saying it. Not the, not the people outside of, these are the people in the church saying that Jesus is not coming back. You need to give this up. You can't see him, and because you can't see him, he ain't coming back. You, you, when I was in college, I used to spend a lot of time, I would say wasting my time now, but back then I thought I was doing something. I was always trying to debate and, and argue with atheists, and they would they would have certain questions about things and 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 they would say well if, if if god is real why is there so much suffering in the world and and if god is real why and, and we would always go back and forth and they would be like 
Well, if I can't touch it and explain it, then it's not real to me. I don't necessarily believe that. I have a little bit of understanding about engineering, right? I, I, I took some, some algebra and some calculus and analytical geometry, and I, I've taken some stuff, but I don't know exactly how an engine works. I just put my key in the ignition and start it and drive it. If I lived a life where I can't fully explain everything I do, I don't cook a lot. I don't raise the cow. I don't process the cow. I don't put the cow and cut it up into that nice ribeye and put it on the skillet and fry it all the time. I don't, I'm not involved in everything. I don't understand how planes stay up in the air. Just because you can't understand something and just because you can't explain it on your own don't mean it don't work. And we still get in cars that we didn't build to drive on roads that we didn't build to share the road with other drivers that we didn't train. To go to a building that we didn't build. There's plenty of stuff out there that is not right in front of our face that we accept without any explanation. But then when it comes to Jesus, we want everything laid out perfectly. And if it ain't laid out perfectly, we don't want it no more. Just because Jesus has not come back doesn't mean he isn't coming at all. Just like my son kept running back and forth to check on the rice and get upset that it wasn't done don't mean that the rice didn't get done. The rice got cooked and it got ate. It just wasn't in the time that he wanted. And so there are people that are saying, uh, also, that we're teaching during this time, they will say that the world keeps turning. And with all things going on, if you haven't been punished yet, you're not going to be punished. Listen, if someone was able to rob a bank once and get away with it, that don't mean that robbing banks is legal. And if you do something long enough, you're going to do it enough to get caught. So I went, I went, to, um, I went to this Citizens Police Academy a while ago, and um, I, I, I'll, I'll measure my language as I say this. I'll just say that there are certain videos that are illegal to have on your computer, like you can go to jail for it. And they, the police department put up on the screen this map of the city and had all the highlights of, they were able to trace these illegal videos, right? And they said they wait until someone gets so many of them on their computer, then they come get them. So if you got one, they're going to watch you until you do so much that they come after you. Just because you haven't gotten caught yet doesn't mean you won't get caught. There is a delay in the activity to see, number one, are you going to turn around, but also to build some patience. And so there's a delay in this time, but also there is a requirement um, to be dedicated. Let the church say dedication. dedication. When Second Peter, by the time Second Peter gets written, all of the pillars of the church, all of the apostles who had been out that originally walked and talked with Jesus, they are all dead or dying. The people who built the church up from the ground up are gone, and Peter is writing to the rest of the people to figure out 
how they are going to keep this thing going now that the pillars, now that the 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 rocks, now that the people who 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 brought this into its heyday are gone. Everyone who had direct contact with Jesus by the time people are reading Second Peter have passed on. And Peter is telling them what to do because now it's time for the new people to put in some work. We can't just live off of the accomplishments of our parents and our grandparents. It's time for us to do some work so that our children and our grandchildren can take this on. Because if it does not happen now, what will be later on will be even worse. And so there's some dedication that has to be put in. There's some work. He is telling the people to be good people in this time. Because you don't know when the day of the Lord is coming. It says it'll come like a thief in the night. I don't know too many thieves that come into a house and say, hey, everybody, I'm stealing. It's going on. I'm grabbing your flat screen. I got your Xbox. They come quickly and quietly, and by the time you realize what happened, it's chaos. And it's already done. But during the delay, we must be dedicated and also know that God is timeless. Let the church say timeless. Only God knows the timing. You know, Second uh, 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 Peter, when it talks about a thousand days being like a day and a day being like a thousand days, I, I like that passage of scripture. Peter is quoting uh, Psalm 90 when he says it, but God is timeless. God's time is not our time. I don't prescribe to say that the Bible is a science book. It's not. It's about how we are to love God and love people. And so people who want to argue about the number of days in the Bible and, and compare it to how many years the earth has been around, I don't do that because God's time is not our time. God's timing is not our timing. God's time is both metaphorical and real. And we can't dictate the timetable. I'm reminded of a joke um, somebody said they were praying to God and he said, God, how much is a trillion dollars to you? And he said, it's like a dollar. And he said, how much is a trillion years to you? And he said, it's like a minute. And so they said, God, can I have a dollar? And God said, in a minute. God's timing is not our timing, and we can't dictate what it is. And just because we can't make somebody do something we want to do does not mean they don't exist. I know I exist to my children, and I tell them no all the time. Just because I don't do what they want don't mean I don't exist anymore. Sometimes we need to hear no. Sometimes we need to hear not yet. Sometimes we need to be patient and wait because God is timeless. And not only is God timeless, God is tender. Let the church say tender. tender. He's tender because he's giving us time to get right. Peter is making the point that the delay in the Lord's return should be understand, understood rather as God giving us time to repent. Um, the, the, the Greek word that gets, you get repent from means to turn away. It's actually a psychological term. It actually, it, it means to change your mind. So when you repent of a sin, you don't just stop doing it. You also change the way you think about it. And Peter is saying he doesn't want anybody to get fallen on the wayside. He wants all of us to be saved. And God is patiently waiting for us 
to repent. God is patiently waiting for us to repent, and God is also patiently waiting for us to be patient. You know, the, the word patient comes from the mid-14th century French word that means enduring without complaint. Bearing, supporting, enduring, permitting, or suffering. Uh, and, and, and when it's used medically, that's why they are taking on, doctors take on patients. Because they're enduring something. And when they're uh, a suffering sick person under treatment, they're enduring without complaint. And so what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to be good people. We're supposed to love God. We're supposed to love our neighbor. We're supposed to help those who are less fortunate. We're supposed to take care of the least, the last, and the lost. Martin Luther King said that the time is always right to do right. And so while we wait for the Lord's return, we don't just sit on our hind parts and do nothing. We become active believers. We pray, we fast, we give, we go to church, we help our neighbor. That's what we're supposed to be doing instead of just saying, well, I'm not going to do anything because the Lord's coming back soon anyway. And so it won't matter what I've done. And Peter makes it plain when he says all of these things, instead of using all the high language that someone educated like Paul would have done, he's saying, no, you need to do better. God is waiting on you to repent. God is waiting on you to turn it around. And so this waiting season, this Advent season is not just about waiting for Christ's birth. It's also waiting for Christ's return. So how should we pass the time? Love the Lord with all your heart and all your mind and all your soul and love your neighbor as yourself. Be a good definition of a Christian because we're always somebody's definition of a Christian. There's somebody that if you ask them what's a Christian, they think of you. What kind of definition are you providing them? In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the doors of the church are open and we invite you to come. Pray with me, please. God, we thank you for the word that went forth. For those who heard it and those who may hear it later, that if they desire to know Christ Jesus and the pardon of their sins, they'll ask, what must I do to become saved? Lord God, we ask that your word go forth and it be a seed that is planted in good soil and produces a great harvest for your church, 30, 60, 100 fold. That your word moves forth with the help of your Holy Spirit in your holy church for your holy kingdom. It is in the name above all names we pray this prayer. In the name of Christ Jesus. Amen. Thank you so much for watching this video please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Don't forget to connect with me on social media, Pastor Johnny Simpson Jr. on Facebook, at Pastor J. Simp Jr. on Instagram and Twitter. Thanks again for watching, and God bless.